miss me? Well, welcome back to another episode of Bad Luck Garage. Today, we're going to talk about a little project update. I'm sure you can see it laying on the counter here. That's right. We're going to turbo project Steppenwolf. So, what's going on here is you guys may remember from several videos ago, uh, John had a STS rear mount turbo kit that uh, he had pulled off of his nephew's um, 98 Trans Am or 98 uh, Formula is what it actually was. Well, uh, the original plan was he had a six liter that he was going to build and put in his truck. Well, lots changed in that time. Uh, he's decided to go another direction. So he decided that I should have the turbo kit. So <laughs> you guys are looking at everything I got here. Um, I am missing some parts, um, but you know, I've got the, the oil pump you know for the rear mount you have to have the oil pump um various little things that I, I i mean honestly some of it i don't even know what it is i think it's got something to do with regulating the pcv system but uh, uh anyway my point is we're not gonna have to worry about any of that because we are not going to rear mount this kit so uh what we're gonna do is is try to use what parts we can here because i'm on a budget um we're gonna try to fab up some exhaust to uh, uh, put this thing under the hood instead of rear mounting it. I don't want to rear mount uh, for several reasons. One of the reasons is I don't want to listen to this oil pump whining. And in Steppenwolf, you know, there's not a lot of insulation. So if there's something under the truck whining, we're going to hear it in the truck. But this is the turbo we got. Uh, not a huge unit. I think it's a uh, T66, I believe is what it is. Um, I actually have two wastegates. This was the tile wastegate that was actually on the car. Um, and I checked the spring. It's got a, I think a 13 pound spring in it. But we also have a brand new tile wastegate. Um, and it has got the uh, six pound spring in it, 5.8 PSI. So this is the one we're probably gonna be using um you know here's the old the old flange that went in the back there uh, of course we're going to be cutting that off and and fabbing up our own thing um we've got our decapped fuel injectors that we had eric durr flow for us but unfortunately these things are all over the place but the good news is we have another set of fuel injectors right here in this fuel rail and I'm gonna decap these fuel injectors and send those to Eric Durr and have him flow them. And I'm hoping that between the two sets that I'll be able to pick eight that are within, you know, three or 4% of each other uh, to use on this project because I do not want to have to buy expensive fuel injectors. Now, um, I also have a set. These were on the Trans Am as well. These are see if you can see that but these are bbk uh shorty headers and as you can tell by the flanges they're actually meant to attach to you know the factory exhaust on a 99 through what is it 99 through 01 uh the ls1 style camaros or firebirds so what we're probably going to do is try to sell these um you know to get the money that we need for the rest of our parts for our, for our turbo system here that we're building uh we don't have a blow-off valve kind of funny story with that i mean we've got all of our intercooler popping and everything we're just missing the intercooler uh we'll, we'll ebay that because this is a budget build guys uh we got our down pipe here which of course this isn't going to work for us but we're you know we've got the flange that's what's important and you know we've got a bin that we can work with there so we'll be cutting that up um uh, we don't have the blow off valve. What happened was, uh, if you guys remember, John had that huge, I think it was a 90 millimeter turbo, uh, and it was brand new. And what he did is he actually, we had a guy from uh, Virginia, came all the way from Virginia and bought uh, a bunch of the turbo parts and bought uh, 
uh, bought the 98 formula that he had. So uh, basically what happened was uh, I thought that there was a used blow off valve, uh, but apparently that piece of piping is missing that had the blow off valve in it. And he had a brand new tile blow off valve that, uh, you know, he sold to that guy with all the other turbo goodies. So I need to buy a blow off valve. So we're going to, we're going to try to sell these and hopefully get close to enough out of these headers for me to order like one of the gen one style tile blow off valves, which I think brand new, they go for like $150 now. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not expecting to get $150 out of these headers, but, uh, you know, just try to help me out a little bit. So I'm going to be putting those on Craigslist. Um, we got our fuel injectors and everything and uh, let me let me show you what i'm wanting to do guys excuse the garage it's it's still a mess like always all right so uh, what a lot of people are doing here you can see i've got my engine covers off so it looks like a disaster under my hood uh what a lot, a lot of people are doing is they're using the log style manifold and what happens is you've got a pipe that goes underneath and connects into the back and then you know you've got your log manifold and your turbo mounts like right here um there's several reasons i don't want to do this uh but the main reason is you know this is this is going to be a daily driver and although i know people do that setup all the time and, and daily drive it the problem with that setup is you lose the ability to read uh individual banks with your uh, narrow band o2 sensors so you know you can put a o2 sensor behind here but nowhere up here you know anywhere you put a o2 sensor over here it's going to be reading both banks because the exhaust is already going to be mixed i'm trying to avoid that so the plan we've come up with is we're actually going to take the shorty headers that i have and we haven't decided yet whether you know we might flip them from side to side where they're still aiming kind of down if they'll clear everything i'm pretty sure they'll clear over here i think if i do that they're going to go right down underneath my heater hoses which is perfect uh the issue is over here on the on the uh driver's side i'm afraid if we do that they're going to run right into my power steering pump uh, there's really not a lot of clearance there. I mean, I can move my power and my ground here. I can move those. That's that's not a big deal at all. Um, you know, but I don't think it's going to aim through there. But we're just going to have to experiment and see. And it's <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. John is just dying to tear into this. But uh, what we're going to do is I'd, I want to keep the top part of this fan shroud, you know, just for the stockish appearance and. You know, it kind of hides stuff and makes it look nice and neat under my engine compartment when all the covers are on. So I don't want to get rid of this, but I don't mind getting rid of the bottom half. You know, it's a two-part thing here. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to take the bottom half off of the shroud and just toss that. And we're going to try to run the pipes. We're going to try to run the pipes, have the pipe come out of this one and snake around here. And we'll put an O2 sensor right here. And then, you know, this manifold will be backwards. We're going to uh, bring the pipe down and loop it underneath these hoses. And tee it in back here. Uh, or merge it, not tee it in, but merge it in to the pipe that's coming from the driver's side. And then bring it over here. And the turbo is probably going to sit right over here. Okay, then we can, you know, route our inner core popping down into the front, blah, blah, blah. Now, that means that our custom cold air box that we made is going to be going bye-bye. I haven't decided what, what, uh, what I'm going to do with this yet. I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to try to sell it or, you know, we may be doing a giveaway to somebody who's done an LS swap in a, in a C10 like this and, and maybe is looking for a, a cold air box, so. You know, keep your eye up, keep your eye out for that. Uh, yeah, we might just do a giveaway on this. Somebody will like having that. I think it looks pretty good. We did a pretty good job fabbing that up. So, um, anyway, the the biggest thing that's stopping me right now is the prospect of this 
you know, Steppenwolf not being mobile. We've not even tried out the nitrous yet, guys, because I've not, uh, you know, I never mounted the bottle. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try, you know, I've not, the reason this is my first video in a while is because this is actually my first day I've had off in about 15 days. My, my job is really hectic in the summer. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I do uh, pest control as my primary job. So you can imagine how bad it is in the summer, it's hot, especially as hot as it's been lately. So I've really not, you know, I've just not had time to make a video. But anywho, um, we want to make some nitrous runs before we start tearing this thing apart to do the turbo setup because I want something to compare it to. So the plan is over the next week, I'm going to try to get my bottle mounted and do a little testing, a little tuning after work throughout the week and uh next friday we're going to try to go to the drag strip make a couple runs on the nitrous and uh you know just you know put down some time see what we're getting and then after that um we're going to start tearing this thing down and and start you know doing our fabrication for our uh, turbo setup uh i'm not sure how long that's going to take I said I am on a budget and I have most of the high ticket items we already have it's just the little stuff you know like I don't have a feed line there's there was a lot of a lot of stuff missing from that turbo kit um, you know we honestly we don't even know if the if the turbo is really good it seems to have a little bit of shaft play but it's not hitting anything so um, depending on how it acts you know we might throw a $40 rebuild kit at it you know put new new bushings in it and everything um, but anyway, that's the plan. So hopefully next week, you know, we'll have you a video with some, some, uh, drag strip runs, you know, on the nitrous and, and see how it does. Now I'm only going up to 125 shot guys. I've got the jets to go up to, uh, I think a 200, but I'm, I'm not going to push it. So, you know, we'll, we'll probably make a couple passes on a 75 shot and then a couple passes on the 125 shot and that'll be it. Now, I want to say, you know, we might be leaving the nitro system on here. So it'll be turbo and then we'll have the nitro system as well, you know, just in case. <laughs> but uh, I'm not quite sure about that yet. But anyway, that's the game plan. Uh, hopefully I can get that together over the next week. And uh, for now... We've got to do an oil change on the wifey's Camaro. You know, her little computer thing just come on and said, hey, I need an oil change. So I'm going to get that done and uh, I'll be back shortly. All right, guys, we got that done. Uh, you kind of know what's going on now with the uh, uh, with the turbo sitting here and, and what we've got planned. Uh, I want to say, um, you know, when you're changing oil, you should always recycle the oil. Uh, you saw me at the end of the video pouring it back into the empty jug. And that's so I can take it, you know, like to AutoZone or, or you know, wherever and, and dump it in their jug, recycle it. Um, contrary to what you've heard, recycling your oil it's not gonna freaking change the natural climate change of the world uh, but what it will do is is keep your from having like a keep you from having a really bad nasty spot in your yard and uh, keep your dogs from coming coming back with oil all over them so that's why I do it uh, anyway uh, I guess uh, I've got a nitrous bottle to mount I don't know if that'll be on video or not basically all I'm gonna do is bolt the board down in the back of Steppenwolf and and bolt the nitrous bottle brackets to it since it's it's just temporary right now but uh anyway i'm gonna try to get that done throughout the week and like i said get to the drag strip uh hopefully next friday and get a couple nitrous runs in before we start fabbing up uh turbo manifolds so uh oh one more thing i want to tell you guys about a, a website um it's called the rpm standard and i actually just recently came acro uh, across these guys on twitter uh, seems like a pretty good, uh, pretty good group of people. They're out of Alabama. 
Um, but what they're trying to do is is go around to different car shows and uh, or if you've got like a cool build or whatever, uh, they'll travel to you and um, you know take pictures or, or whatnot. Or if they can't get to you, uh, they'll get you to take pictures and tell them a little bit about, a little bit about your car and you know they'll feature it on their website. So that's called the RPM standard. So uh, you might want to Google that or I might throw a link down here in the description, but uh, definitely check those guys out. Uh, they're up and coming. Looks like, you know, something that might be pretty cool to get into. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to get in here, get me a shower because it's really hot out here today. So uh, if you like this video, hit the like button as always. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you next time on Bad Luck Garage.